While they were perfecting hybrid systems that customers genuinely loved, competitors were making bigger bets on pure electro electric technology and infrastructure development. Now let's examine how these companies ended up in this challenging position because understanding their strategic decisions helps us predict their recovery potential. This is where we can see the logic behind their approach. All three Japanese manufacturers bet their futures on hybrid technology being a bridge to full EVs. And from an engineering perspective, that made complete sense. Improve efficiency while waiting for charging infrastructure to mature. You see, the problem wasn't the strategy itself, it was the execution timeline. While they were perfecting hybrid systems that customers genuinely loved, competitors were making bigger bets on pure electro electric technology and infrastructure development. And here's where the strategic miscalculation becomes really clear. Japan, despite inventing lithium ion battery technology, didn't scale manufacturing for the EV transition. And this isn't necessarily a permanent disadvantage. I think companies can build battery capacity if they commit the resources. To be honest, right now, when Honda and Nissan need batteries for their EVs, they're buying from their suppliers who also serve their competitors. And Honda's choice to use the GM Ultimate platform for their prologue actually shows smart resource allocation. And in some ways, why reinvent the wheel? But for long-term competitiveness, platform control matters enormously. And companies that control their EV platforms can iterate faster, they can customize more effectively, and they can differentiate their products. Now, recent investment adjustments from both manufacturers reflect market realities rather than strategic failures. And Honda's partnership approach and Nissan's alliance strategies could actually prove more resilient than going it alone.